Ladies and gentlemen, we are back on a podcast. I'm excited for this one because we got somebody that I genuinely know is going to add value. My man Travis is on the show today, the founder of Flex Watches. You see him probably on reality TV. Uh, What's up, bro? What's happening? What's happening with you, man? Glad to have you here on the show, man. What's happening with you? All is good, bro. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. I know people right now, they're going through all the different things, trying to figure out more about you, learn more about your story, going through the show notes. Take them back, you know, just to you growing up. Like, where are you from? Uh, I grew up in Irvine, California. Uh, I was around the the startup culture of clothing lines early on. My older brother's friend started a clothing line called LRG. So from a young age, I watched guys build a brand and use celebrities and create a lifestyle to sell products. So I've always been really into that and wanted to have my own brand one day. Yeah, that's crazy as you mentioned the LRG. I think I think it's an understatement. I remember growing up, man. This is probably uh we're telling my age a little bit. I remember getting to like the ninth grade and LRG was coming out. And I remember like just to have that shirt, to have that logo, to have that feeling, you know, the colors they were using, whether it was the green or whether it was the red or the brown, it just was mixed to a certain way, which I can imagine helped teach you branding strategies, right? Like what are some yeah, of the I mean, branding strategies you learned by LRG? I, I did. I mean, you hit it on the head, right? It wasn't even just who they were working with and how they were doing it. It was like their messaging, you know, they had these like taglines and slogans that they would just put on t-shirts for like, deeper roots, stronger branches, um, make jeans, not war, you know, uh, underground inventive, overground effective, and they use the tree and the whole thing. So they were really early on into like the messaging and the culture. And I remember they started working with Kanye when he was just like a producer and no one knew him. They just like vibed with him, you know what I mean? And they were doing those warehouse sales. I was actually in middle school and they were sending me to school with like with swag and like flyers to, to basically just flyer the warehouse sale because that's how you did it back in the day. They didn't even have e-commerce. They were just like slanging out of a warehouse. And uh, I even did a couple sales at my house, <laughs> my parents' garage. <laughs> they like bring over clothes and I would just promote it to my friends. And I mean, man, shout out to Kev D, the marketing guy, and Jonas, the founder. Because they had it right, man. And I, I saw it. And it was from like that grassroots level to the point where they were seeding celebrities and products started ending up in music videos and in like all my favorite magazines on MTV, all that. And I was like, wow, like they went from like literally screen printed T-shirts with slogans on them to cut and sew garments to like in Macy's and every major retailer you could imagine. So it was just really cool to see. So like at a young age, I'm so, you know, I'm so stuck on this one because a lot of people know my story, dude. I was 14 and when I was 14, my brother did something crazy. He went out to college and he became like a big nightlife party promoter, right? And so I was 14, I was in the club. Like I was in the club partying with artists, but that changed my mentality from a marketing standpoint, right? I knew how to network with people, collaborate. I started on my own parties at a young age. You being around LRG, being around Kev, you know, Jonas, those guys, at that age, what do you think that did for you, you know, for the long run and what you wanted to create and do with your life? Yeah, man. I mean, it's actually funny. I was 14 years old when they started the business. And by the time I was 16, I was going to their events. They were sneaking me in the nightclub to the back door. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I, I kind of had probably a similar experience to you and seeing all these artists too come up with them. You know, it wasn't just like Jonas was a DJ from Laguna Beach. When it was just, he, he was an orphan and he started this brand and he went through those struggles, but then I saw the come up and that for me was like light bulb in my head. I was like, wow, he really did this. Like he took this idea and this concept and he created a lifestyle, built this brand. And for me, from a young age, that was ingrained in me. I mean, the elective or the class that you get to choose in high school, I did um, graphic design and screen printing because I wanted to make my own shirts. So like before I even, went to college, I had this idea of getting into the apparel business and creating a brand. I didn't know what I was going to do. Wow. I actually started by creating a printing company because I learned screen printing and that like spawned into this whole movement where like when I went away to college, I realized that no one had dope clothes and all these fraternities and sororities and student organizations, they're just buying from like this fucking random print shop and it wasn't even cool. So I started like getting into the industry that way. 
Um, and I was still connected to the guys at LRG. So I was giving people clothing, wearing the dopest looking jackets. And people kind of knew me as that guy from Orange County who was affiliated with LRG. So I kind of leveraged that and I helped other people make their clothing. And I turned that into a whole business. So, I mean, my freshman year of college, I started a printing and design company which wow. allowed me to work with artists, athletes, other brands, clothing. And I saw like that side of it, the manufacturing logistics. And I got some celebrity clients eventually. It was, you know, I ran the business for a decade. So for me, it was like all of a sudden inspiration to wanting to work with people like Jonas mm -hmm. to then working with other brands. And then it just turned into like, I wanting to create my own brand. Um, but it was always in the back of my head, man. Like it was, always a big impression on me you know it's crazy i think this is funny because there's a lot of things that we're doing at a young age uh whether we're 14 like we both were or whether you know we're getting ready to go to college or whatever may you know wherever it may be for you we don't really understand why we're doing it and then at like the like at some point in our lives we're like yo hold on wait i was learning this because i was supposed to create this you know, what are some of those ahas when you look back, right? On some of the things you did to get to where you are today at those stages in life, what are some of those dots that you're later able to connect? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of dots, right? And you don't know what you're doing while it's happening. Like, like you're saying, I was in this position, I didn't even really know it. And I was learning all these things from building a brand and grassroots marketing from literally, like I said, handing out flyers mm. to then watching these guys go to major trade shows. And I actually went to Las Vegas and went to the magic trade show with them and like walk their booth for the first time. And like that feeling that they had setting up their own booth, closing retail accounts, getting the product shipped and distributed, and then seeing them come out with campaigns and like really doing it. And I was around it, but I was just like, this is fun. I I'm cool because I'm around these older guys that are doing this. And I didn't realize that I was learning the fundamentals of creating a brand. So at that point, when I went to create my brand, I literally did the same things. I like almost copied what they did in a way. And I just figured out like, how can I roll around and hand out flyers on campus for my company? How can I get my product on celebrities? How do I get to the magic trade show in Las Vegas and get my own booth? And like, I would have flashbacks where I was like, oh, I know I'm supposed to be here, but I didn't know why. And I would just remember the LRG guys putting in the extra work and building their booth mm. while I was literally having this deja vu while I'm putting up my booth, sweating in Las Vegas, just like going through this, like, why am I doing this again? And I was like, oh yeah, like it's going to pay off. Like I watched these guys do it. And now I look back 10 years later from that point when I started Flex Watches and I'm like, wow, I really did learn the fundamentals of not only building a brand, but business and just grinding, you know, like putting your head down and grinding. And these guys did that until, I mean, they're still doing it, but you know, it's just, it's just a mentality that they, these dudes had. And they went from like the streets to hundred million dollars, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, I think to sum it up for a lot of people that's listening right now, you know, whether you're in the entrepreneurship space or whether you have, you know, goals to be an entrepreneur or be in business, it really comes down to the experiences. So right now, if you're listening to this, if you are in a career field, you're trying to climb that corporate ladder or you're trying to get that job promotion, what are some of the experiences and things that you're learning that you can take with you, whether that's from uh, balancing payroll or whether that's from, you know, getting people to make a purchase and a sale at a register. I don't even care if it's a, do an add on and you're working at McDonald's. Those experiences have helped people like Travis, you know, put them all together and make something out of it. Like for you, right? And once you go off to, you know, learning about this print company, you stop the print company. When did you get the urge and the idea? And I want you to kind of give to the audience right now. Cause you guys are doing a lot of give back, which I think is important. But when did you get the idea for something like flex watches and what do you think, you know, has made it, you know, be successful as it has been? Totally. Um, so yeah, I would say it was like five or six years into my printing company. I was starting to deal with real brands and I was making their product and shipping it to retailers on their behalf, like doing the manufacturing and the fulfillment. And I started seeing my clothing that I was making for other brands appear on major celebrities. I mean, like 
everyone, you know, from Diddy and Bieber down, down the line, like pretty much every athlete and artist that I looked up to was wearing this clothing. And uh, one of my clients was Paris Hilton and I was making her merch and she was a DJ. And it just became like this thing where I, in my head, I was like, I want that to be my product. I don't want to be behind the scenes anymore mm. with all these celebrities rocking this gear or these stores selling the product. I want to walk in and see my brand. So I had that in the back of my mind and I knew that one day I wanted to do it, but I just never really figured out like what the next steps were. And I had a business that was doing millions of dollars in sales. So, and I had like 15 employees. I couldn't just like abandon this business. Um, and what ended up happening is I started sourcing product from overseas using two different websites. One was called trade key, which connects with manufacturers. And one was Alibaba before it was what it is today it was just basically connecting with factories and messaging them and finding different suppliers all over the world. So I was doing that for my clients like Paris Hilton and other people already bringing in hard goods like sunglasses, hats, high volume of t-shirts, stuff like that. And I learned like the sourcing game is what you basically call it. Right. Mm. And a buddy came to me with an idea. He's like, yo, I found this watch. It's interchangeable. The face pops out of the band. And I think it's really cool. Can we make our own? And I was like, thought about it. I thought about it for a couple of days. And then I kept seeing these Livestrong bracelets, these yellow bracelets that were just rubber, that had no real function, but they were raising awareness with Lance Armstrong, who's a celebrity, and giving back to cancer, which is a cause. And I was like, how can we create our own version of that using this vehicle, a watch, right? So we talked about it and we brainstormed and I always wanted to start my own brand. And so I just jumped at the opportunity and I was like, you know what? I can find a factory. I'll source a watch that's going to be rubber, interchangeable, flexible. Our company's mm. called Flex, but at first it was about the product. You know, let's find a flexible product. Um, and it really emulated bright colors like those charity bracelets. Or like no one's created a whole brand around giving back to various different causes. So we came up with 10 colors. We picked 10 charities and decided to donate 10% of sales to different organizations. So we found different organizations that impacted us and basically came up with this concept where it's like, let's sell watches that have more function than these rubber bands, raise awareness for these different causes that we care about and donate to charity. And it goes all the way back to when LRG started they just were all about the slogans and they were talking about how they can make a difference in the community. So we're like time watch to make a difference. Mm. So we came up with this idea time to make a difference. So it was just this watch and this slogan. And we started telling these stories, how like this watch tells stories. It raises awareness for this various cause. And we were really just into the storytelling. So we got the watches and we didn't even have a website. Like we had a website, wow. but it was like we weren't making sales. So the first thing we did was go out and sell them like fundraiser style where we had set up a table. Mind you, this is like 2010. So we're going to different venues. And one of the things we did was we went to a church and we had this red watch that gave back to, it was a charity called Rojo Gomez. It was down in Mexico and they were building um, basically community centers, kitchens to help put kids through school and feed them. And so we're like, you know what? Let's just sell all our watches this weekend and make them give back to this cause. And then we'll see how much impact we can make and tell that story. And over a two-day period, we sold, I want to say it was like $18,000 worth of watches or something. And we just took all that money and donated it to this cause because it was just about like, let's tell this story. Let's build this brand. Like, let's give back and wow. see what we can do. So that was like the beginning. And we sell out of these watches. And we go down to Mexico. I was living in San Diego at the time, so it was really close. Go down to Mexico, and we did like what they called a missions trip, where we helped build the community center, uh, and we donated all this money. And it was just like it was a trip because we didn't even know what we were doing. You know, we're like, okay, cool. Like, let's come up with this watch idea. It's flexible. Let's call it Flex. Let's give back to charity. And it was like kind of fragmented, but we we're like pulling from ideas from the past. Uh -huh. And then that's kind of like literally we sold out and we had this story to run with and that's kind of where i got my break like i didn't even know if it was going to be a brand or what we we're going to do with it but we came back from mexico on a saturday 
And me and my partner are like, well, let's go get some food. And when we went to go eat, I had two watches left. And I was wearing one pink one and one bright blue one on either wrist. Uh -huh. And I went and sit down. And we ended up sitting down on a shot of the real world of MTV. Uh -huh. And for those of you who probably probably heard about my brand before it was probably from that TV show. So no one really knows how that happened, but like we just went down to Mexico to do a fundraiser and ended up in this shot, which turned into like a whole story of its own, which we can get into if you let's want. Get into but... it. Yeah, let's get into it. Like, <laughs> how, how, okay. how, how do you go from the, you know, you know, creating this brand to, to standing out? We weren't even expecting, you know, to even get the spotlight to, you know, getting seen and featured and being on real world. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy, man. Like they say, if you do good things, good things will happen to you, right? So in my mind, we did a good deed and we were going to like figure out how we were going to run with this story. So the idea of going to this lunch was like, let's talk about what product we're going to buy. Let's talk about how we're going to tell this story through content and through marketing. We're going to make, we talked about, oh, we should make a video and like we should put it on YouTube, right? So those are like our ideas and we we're going to talk about it. And it was really weird because the restaurant was empty and there was only five seats and they were at the bar. So we're like, all right, let's go sit at the bar. Sorry, there was seven, but there was five kids sitting down. There was two empty seats between the kids and there was nowhere else to sit. So we're like, all right, we'll just go sit at the bar. And I look over and I see cameras and I look over this way and I see cameras and I look up and I see a boom mic and I'm like, I don't even know what's happening. But this is crazy. Someone's filming something and they're not saying anything to us. And the way that the production works is the production company and the camera guys, they don't say anything to the talent. The real world, they just kind of throw them in into a scenario and see what happens, you know, and That's they just crazy. film for like three months straight. So we sit down and one of the castmates is like, hey, nice to meet you guys. Another guy to my right, I see he's wearing a Livestrong bracelet. And I was like, oh, it's a cool bracelet. Do you like this watch? And I just said that to him. And that's like one of the lines in, on the show. And he's like, yeah, what's up? I'm like, check this watch out. And I take the watch out. I pop the face out. And he's like, whoa, that's so cool. What is it? And we get to talking with these kids. And we didn't know they were on the real world at that point. I just knew they were being filmed. And we tell our story. Like, you know, we're flex watches. We make watches that give back. Each color represents a different charity. And the kids sitting to my left between me and my partner was affected by suicide. Like he lost a couple family members yeah. to suicide. And he's like, do you guys have a suicide watch? I'm like, no, we don't. But we have this blue watch that doesn't have a charity. Maybe we could do an 11th cause and like we could work with you. And he's like, yeah, I've always wanted to start my own charity and create a cause and raise awareness. I'm like, I'm on this show called The Real World and I wanna like tell my story. And I was like, oh, wow. First of all, let's help you build a charity so you can tell your story and give you a platform. But also let's give back to that charity by selling watches to create a cause. And he was so into it. He's like, yo, come with me to my house. And like, we're like, is this happening? Are we going to the real world house? <laughs> and we walk from a bar down the street to the beach and we get in this mansion, like massive on the beach. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Cameras and then production pulls us aside, has us sign waivers, gets our IDs. I'm like, all right, have fun. And we go in filming and like, I tell the guy I'll help him, but I don't really think anything of it. And I give him my phone number. He writes it down on a paper and they have like the real world phone in the house. And the next morning I get a call like eight in the morning and it's this kid, Nate. And he's like, Hey bro, can I come to your office today? And I was like, well, I could actually, I could come see you if you want in a couple hours with my partner and we could talk about everything. So we went over to the real world house, the cameras were filming the whole thing. And like, honestly, I blacked out and it was just like, we just talking about business and like, I kind of like forget the cameras are there and then it just became real. And we filmed for like 40 days straight and he came to my office and like we, by that time we sourced the product. I had the samples, we created his charity and I set up a nightlife event at, at a club in San Diego called Stingery. Like it took a page out of um, LRG's LRG. book and I set yep. up a fashion show. And I was like, yo, let's do this fashion show. Let's film it. Um, Party Rock was big on MTV at that time. So we booked Party Rock to perform oh, uh, LMFAO, you know, and they had a clothing line too. So we did this like Party Rock, LFMAO or LMAO, what LMFAO, Flex fashion show and MTV filmed it. So like it started as like we meet this kid in a bar 
and then they integrate us in different scenes. We're in like six different episodes of like a lot of airtime, just going through the process of helping this kid build his brand while simultaneously telling the story of our company and exposing our products. So we're organically integrated into this whole thing. And it goes from start to finish, like literally from concept to fashion show. And it ended and I didn't know what was going to happen. And I get a call one day from the vice president of Viacom. And he's like, is this Travis? Like, yeah, how's it going? He's like, well, let you tell me, like you were in all these shots. We just got the footage from the production company. Like, what are we going to do here? I'm like, what do you mean? Uh He's like, well, this integration is worth millions of dollars and we charge $2 million an episode and you're in like six or seven episodes. I'm like, uh, what, you know? And uh, and he's like, so we can just do this one of two ways. We can cut the footage or you guys can pay us. And I was like, wait, what? They're going to cut all this. So obviously didn't have the money. And we flew out and met with them and talked about a deal that would make sense for everyone that would like shed light on this character, look good for MTV. Uh, And we did like, we made an agreement where they got a percentage of sales and we did this uh, rev share and like the show aired and they pumped it dude. there. We, we ended up shooting a commercial. We were on like all the MTV shows. Like at the time it was like Beavis and Butthead, Teen Mom, <laughs> all this stuff. Like, at, like I'm just be watching random shows with my girl. And then all of a sudden I'm like on a commercial, like, Oh, Whoa, this is crazy. Right. That's and nice. just like, it went from zero to a hundred, man. And that season aired, we did over a million dollars in sales and I had never really ran a website before. So it was like the tail wagging the dog. And I went through all those experiences of like running out of product, dealing with customer service issues, running in the Chinese new year, mm. like not getting packages delivered on time for Christmas for people like, just like all like to scale the growth pain, you know? Mm. And so I learned a lot and I just had to really like dive into this business. And again, I had another business. So I was like, this has got to be my full-time focus. I need my staff and my team to run this other business so that like we can really focus on this. Uh, And then that it just started, man. We're like, all right, let's go do a trade show in Las Vegas. Like let's copy what LRG did. Let's work with celebrities. And that's when like, I started reaching out to people. I was like, hey, I was on MTV. I want to do a collaboration with you. And I got in the room with all sorts of people because I was able to tell my story. Um, And a lot of people didn't have like a vehicle, like a watch, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? To basically brand. And like one of the first people I met at the trade show was Damon John. And he's like, oh yeah, we're filming a new show called Shark Tank. Like (laughs) I don't have a watch, but I love licensing. You should get into licensing. So it was just like, just amazing opportunity. And the next week I flew out to New York, I met with Damon and his team. We did a licensing deal with Damon. He ended up wearing the watch on like the first few seasons of Shark Tank. If you see he's wearing a rubber watch, that's a flex watch. Uh, and he mentored me and showed me how to do licensing and work with artists and like big IP, like WWE wrestling was one of the ones we did at the time. Uh, and then I just took that knowledge and I parlayed it. And like, I met Tyga and we did a, a deal with Tyga and we made a watch for his company, Last Kings, that ended up in a Bieber video that had 150 million views and went crazy. And I just kind of like kept going one thing at a time, dude. And it's just, you know, there was a moment where I looked back and it was like five years had gone by. And I'm like, I'd part, I've been on TV. I partnered with Damon John. I worked with Tyga. And, you know, I was like, what's next? And so. I mean, I just spoke a lot. So you hey, listen, feel I free break, to unpack I want to unpack it. There's a lot to break down because if you're listening to this right now, what you're hearing from Travis break you break it down is is the importance of telling your story and, and not being afraid of telling your story, but also being you know aware of your surroundings and your environment. Right. So like if you, if you break down the story, dude, like you, you seriously you're just at a bar noticing, hey, man, something different is happening right now at this moment. But also seeing that, but being able to say, OK, how can I insert myself into this conversation, you know, and, and, and make it be one that is valuable and see how I can help somebody. And I think that's the first thing to really break down is that as you're going through your story, what are those points that are happening that could be, you know, could be small things to some, but lead to some of these monumental things. And what I like so much about your story is that when you unpack it, you, it always goes back to what you were learning. 
Maybe not know why you were learning it, whether it was the LRG, how they were moving, celebrities, how they were moving, you know, getting, you know, taking one opportunity and turning it into another opportunity. So you talked about like getting the MTV thing to happen, but also some of those hurdles, because a lot of people, I think, if you really unpack this, they would have got that phone call from, you know, from Viacom would have been like, oh, man, yo, just cut the footage. I'm out. You know, let's talk about this. What was it for you to say, you know what? I ain't got the money for that right now. But we gonna make something happen. What was you know? What was it for you to, to for your mentality to say I need to come up with some type of deal? Walk us through that process because I think people I don't want that to go over people's heads because sometimes we get you know hit with a barrier in life and we just give up and obviously you didn't. Yeah, I mean that was a big moment in my life. I remember my heart dropped when they said they're gonna cut the footage. I felt sick because everyone knew I was filming like in the in the town, you know, in San Diego. I was being followed by cameras and everyone was trying to get in these shots and they were, you know, trying to get us to eat at their restaurants or go to their nightclubs. And it was a big deal for me at the age of 25. I was like, you know, I'm going to be on this reality show. And I just didn't want to take no for an answer. I was relentless. I just kept calling and calling the guy. I was like, where are you? He's like, I'm in Las Vegas (laughs) at a trade show. And uh, that was actually magic as well. I was like, oh, I'm going to be there. But I wasn't going to be there at that time. So I was like, I'm going to fly out. I'm going to meet this guy. And I want him to see me and have this conversation with me and like really understand where I'm coming from. you know. And so I figured in my mind, if I could get FaceTime with this guy, I can explain to him that I'm only 25 years old. I don't have access to millions of dollars. But this is such a great opportunity. And if it's really worth what he's saying it's worth, then there's got to be a way to create a deal that has upside for them. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't even realize I was doing was I was actually incentivizing Viacom to market me. And by the time I left that meeting, we had like a rough idea of what that deal would look like. Uh, And then it just started. He's like, oh, meet tribes. This is our internal advertising agency that does all our digital. They're going to send an email blast to 5 million people. Oh, meet meet the television department. They're going to shoot a commercial with you, right? Like all these things start happening. And I was like, wait a minute. I created a scenario where the more they push me, the more money they make. And they have a certain amount of money that they think that they need to make. So they're going to blow me up so that they can make the money that they want. And it was just like, again, like I didn't even really know what I was doing. I just was trying to find a way to make this work. And I was relentless in my pursuit. I was just like, this has to happen. And I told the guy straight up, I was just like, honest with him. I was like, everyone knows we're going to be on the show. It's a big deal to me. Like I got to have the money. You're, he was giving me like a week. He's like, we need, we need the money in a week. And I was like, I can't come up with millions of dollars in a it's week, man. <laughs> you know? And so it, it was just this, like, I get, I mean, I call it luck, but I get it even telling the story. Like it's not luck. I had to make it happen, you know? Yeah, I just I had to this. figure out a way. Yeah, I love this um, story, and, the, and that was it, man. Yeah, I love the story, was... man. Let's let's break this down, right? Because somebody's like, all right, Sean, it's very obvious. Travis is like an e-com marketing expert here. And I got a product. I got a business. And I'm struggling. What is, like, some of your tips? Like, maybe get an audience, maybe, you know, three tips on, on if they have an e-commerce brand uh, or need, you know, help marketing it. What would be your advice to them? All right. So back in the day, reality TV was like the social media, right? So what I did with reality TV, you can do with social media and influencers today, but you have to tell your story. First of all, it starts with the story, right? And that spans into creating content and doing content marketing to tell that story. And if you look at it like a sales funnel, right? Like we all talk about e-commerce. This is the top of the funnel where you're getting the traffic and you're creating awareness for your business. But then once you get that traffic to your site, you have, and I've learned this over the years, I didn't know this during those times, you have to capture the data. And what I mean, but that's the second point. What I mean by capturing the data is getting emails, cooking users, putting Facebook pixels, Google pixels on your website so that you can actually remarket and retarget those people. And then once you have that initial moment at the top of funnel, and then you get them to your website and you capture data, that's really where then you can put people into the consideration phase and the purchase phase of the funnel and and actually get them to take their credit card out their wallet and pay you money, right? So it it really is the same formula today. 
is like creating this story and telling it through content and using social media to tell that story and then expanding on that. Cause now you have followers, you have community that you have to build engagement, right? So you use social media to just raise awareness and tell that story. You use your website to capture the data that you need. And then you use your email and your paid media to actually sell people once they've already heard of you and been to your website or engaged with your social media. So, I mean, me and you could break this down about <laughs> funnels and everything that's happening. But like even today, you know, like people are going on free apps like Clubhouse yeah. to talk about free value, to raise awareness for something. And then people are like, I'm going to go to their IG. I'm going to mm-hmm. check out their website. I'm going to hire them. And if they don't, you're usually giving them a reason to then come back to your site through remarketing or retargeting or hitting them again with more value on social. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, it's it's not luck, you know, as much as it seems like, oh, this I'm just going to launch my e-commerce store. Yeah. And, and for someone like you asked, like if you're starting an e-commerce store, focus on the story, sell the story, not the product, mm. right? Use mm. content and social media to do that. Then make sure you're capturing data, getting followers, getting emails, getting SMS, getting cookies, and then create even more content to make people consider your purchase before you're even selling it. Just like, oh, this is why I want to buy this watch, you know, and then calls to action with hard offers like click here, buy now, stuff like that. Um, and it's it's an art, you know what I mean? And it's different for every business. And the channels are different, but the concept is relatively the same, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Clubhouse, you know, Shopify, WordPress. It's like those are all just tools and you just got to figure out your funnel. No, that's real. I mean, that's real advice. And, and also, too, I like about, you know, the advice that you gave because you just gave everybody a quick little master class. <laughs> what I like about the advice you gave is how can you utilize some of those tools, some of those you know, new apps and figure out your place in it? Hey, so you mentioned Clubhouse. Clubhouse is definitely something that's catching a lot of people's attention. You know, for you, you know, discovering that platform, have you thought about using that uh, to leverage uh, what you already been creating? And how, what's your thoughts on the app? I see people say, okay, it's time consuming. I see other people say, okay, it can be something that can help my business. You know, what's your thoughts on it? Because especially for me, you know, listening to your story, uh, you're someone who catches trends early and you're also able to figure out the strategy behind that so what's your thoughts on clubhouse okay so that's two part for me right yeah when i was on tv and i actually ended up getting on tv a couple times right i started getting attention as the ceo founder of flex watches so i used that to then build my personal brand because then i realized i was like it's cool to build flex but it's even cooler to build trav and attach trav to various different brands products services so a few years ago um actually about four years ago i went on a show called the profit with marcus limonis and he invested in my business and we became partners and we launched like a dozen e-com businesses and i reoccurred as a cast mate like 10 different times helping other entrepreneurs build their brand and sell products online because i had this unique experience of going on mtv and then i went on his show and i was like this is what happened to me in the past I've used TV to convert TV viewers into customers, and this is the funnel I used. And he's like, I need that. I need you to do that for all my businesses that go on the show. (laughs) So I was like, okay, how do I take my knowledge and myself and create a brand around it? And he was the guy, Marcus Limonis, for those who don't know, is a billionaire. He's a host of the show, The Profit. One day he texted me and said, let's build your personal brand, right? Because I was trying to get him to do a podcast and him to do a course. And he was like, no, let's build your brand. So I made this decision in my head. I was like, okay, I'm gonna flip the script. Instead of posting about my company all the time and making content about my company, I'm gonna intertwine myself into the content and then kind of spin that off one more time. In the same way that I spun off my printing company and created a brand, I was like, I gotta spin off my brand now that I've had some success and be create a personal brand. Mm. And now, and that was like probably three years ago. And now everyone is talking about personal branding, right? So I got a little bit of a head start on really trying to position myself. And I was like, okay, what do I know? I know e-commerce and I know marketing. So I'm good at those things. Let's focus there, right? And what ended up happening is I started creating content 
around my knowledge to become an authority in e-commerce. That's that's basically as simple as that. And so I started putting out videos. I started like making longer captions, posting things on my Instagram story that were around those subjects, right? And I learned that the more I leaned into it, the more people accepted that that's who Trav is. Trav is an e-commerce and marketing expert. He's the guy that's been on the real world and CNBC, the profit. And I just kind of like leaned into it. And where I'm going with this, so I know it's a long-winded answer, is that it's wildly important to create valuable content for people to bring them into your ecosystem, mm. whether that's getting them to follow me on social media and engage or go to my website or hire me now as a consultant, right? Yeah. Um, and these days, like today, I have a, a course with Shopify, like I'm a partner with Shopify. I have an e-commerce agency that I basically took my team and I was like, hey, let's offer these services to people who don't understand that. So that's uh, travbrand.com. And so I'm Trav from Trav Brand, and we have multiple brands and services and courses and things that we do. So I, I really like flipped this whole thing. And I was always looking for a way to deliver free content to people, whether it's going on podcasts, doing interviews with people, whatever, making eBooks, just to find a way to connect with the community without selling so that they could find me and they could discover my story and decide for themselves that they wanted to take my course or hire me. Mm. Now Clubhouse is all of that in one. Because mm. not only do I get to go on the app as myself, I get to listen to really valuable information from my peers and hear them talk and connect with them. And I'm big on networking and connecting with various different people in my network that I haven't talked to in a while that I normally wouldn't just pick up the phone and have a conversation with. But at the same time as learning, I get to then drop bombs for other people. And I get to teach the younger generation about these topics and the things I've learned. And instead of selling myself and being like, go buy my course or hire my company or buy my watch, I just give out value. And then when you give out value, they then click your bio, they find you on IG, and they go down the rabbit hole themselves. And then, you know, I'm sure just like you, yeah. they just go on there and give free knowledge. And then my DMs and my emails are blown up and people want to work with me. And I say, oh, actually, I do have a website for that. Or, oh, you'd be perfect for this course, yeah. you know, or maybe I can consult you or coach you on this, this subject. And so it really has, it's turned into business. Um, and it's part of what I do from marketing, this social media thing, but it, it's also like a really, really good way to just refresh and like freshen up on all these things that are people are talking about. And sometimes I just go in rooms incognito and just listen just to like <laughs> hear shit, you know, about investing or cryptocurrency or real estate, things that I'm not an expert in, but I want to learn in. And so I've kind of come semi addicted to that app because there's just so many different reasons for it. It's like connecting with the homies, yeah. listening to really valuable advice, dropping bombs and listening, like getting feedback from people. So it's just like this mix of like just flow. And I don't even like, I just throw it on my AirPods and I just cruise around and do other stuff. Like I'll be working or I'll be like, cooking and uh, all of a sudden I'll hear some question I'm like oh I can answer that I'm like <laughs> all right so you know what I mean so it's just like it's cool it's like passive marketing that you don't even really have to think about and it's just cool conversation so yeah, I cool. hope that answered your yeah, question it does it does and I, I think fam also too it, it quickly you can see whether you're giving value or not you know like you can be in a room whether you're the moderator that just started the room or you're brought up to be you know one of the moderators you can add your value to that one question and go straight to your other social media handles and realize, oh, snap, that helps somebody, you know, and then they, they want to know more. They want to learn more. And I like the fact that you talked about, you know, getting people uh, to go either, whether it's down a funnel, so it might be a strategy, maybe there's a text option. So I love that and making the most of those rooms that you step in. You know, Travis, I, I got to ask you the question that you know, before I ask you that question, I want to think about this one. People are hearing these big names. They're hearing Marcus. They're hearing Damon John. Like it's important to learn how to pitch when you got a product, you got a brand, you know, what would be one of your tips for the audience that's listening right now to make a stronger pitch to somebody? What would be your, your advice? That's a great question. Um, so believe it or not, say less. I talk a lot. So, um, 
you definitely want to focus on the things that are going to add value to that specific person and do your research. I had already read Damon John's book and followed FUBU, grew up wearing FUBU. When the LRG days started, I looked back at FUBU for inspiration and seeing what they were doing with culture. And like Damon was the pioneer of that stuff. And when I followed Damon, I, I did know in my mind that he was the licensing guy. And I also realized that he didn't have a watch deal in his portfolio. So when I met him, it was just, it was straight to it. It was like, Hey man, I'm a big fan. Uh, I know all about your past. I know you're big in licensing. I have the perfect product for licensing. I know you don't have a watch. Maybe we could work together and make some money using your knowledge and I'll do all the work. You know, mm. you just got to open your doors for me. And like that was, that was basically the pitch. And it was just like finding a way to add value. And it's like over and over again, that's kind of the scenario. Like I had watched The Profit I had, since season one. I knew who Marcus was, but I knew he was big in retail. Brick and mortar had a couple hundred retail stores. And I, I saw in the show he invested in a couple fashion brands and I'd go to their website and I see massive opportunity. Like I wouldn't have, there would be no email capture. There wouldn't be any retargeting or remarketing. And so I was like, man, there's a huge opportunity here. So within five minutes of meeting Marcus, I was drawing funnels on the board. I'm like, look, people see it on TV. Then they go to the website and then this happens and that happens. I was like, I can help you do this with all your brands. And he looked at me, he's like, and he's on the show. He's like, so you're basically a sales and marketing company. You're not a watch company. You just sell watches, but you're a sales and marketing company. I'm like, yeah, kind of. And he made an investment in Flex Watches. But the caveat was, you're going to come work for me and you're going to run an entire portfolio of e-commerce brands, right? So there was, there was always an angle. I did my research on them to the point where I could just have any conversation candid with them. And be like, look, I know, I know you don't have a watch company and I know you don't do e-commerce and I know I can help you and here's how, right? And it was, and it was never like, hey, I need... Four hundred thousand dollars, by the way, for my business to grow. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it was just like, let me add value to you. And then, in his mind, the day he met me, he wrote me a four hundred thousand dollar check. You know, and he's like, I got to invest in you. I got to hire you. Let's put you on salary. Let's get you a six figure salary. And da 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 da. And like, before we were done filming, I had all the paperwork. I was ready to go. And as soon as that shit aired, he's like, Let's go get an office. Find an office in the fashion district. Here's your budget. Just go build a team. Like, let's grow. Let's do this. And so, like, those are all things I dreamed about wow. that I didn't even have to ask for. I was like, this is what I can do for you. And he's like, let's do it. You know, and his vehicle for doing that, like, he had the checkbook. So he's like, let me invest in you. Let me hire you. And we'll build this thing. And we became really good friends. Like, now telling that story, I was at Marcus's wedding, right? That's crazy. My brother's. It's crazy. My brother's still the head of marketing for his, he has a pet store, has like 90 stores, does like a hundred million a year. My brother's the head of marketing, my older brother. So like, we're very close, you know what I mean? And uh, it got to the point with Marcus where I, I launched all these brands and he's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I want to buy Flex back. I want to do Flex because there was a, this is a weird ass story, but there was a point into that when we started this portfolio where he then bought me out and made me a partner and in his whole thing. And so he owned Flex. And then at one point I was like, let me buy Flex back and go do my thing. You can hire my brother and we can live happily ever after. And so it was just like this crazy, like I got an investment from Marcus. We became partners. He bought my company and then I bought it back. <laughs> and then I went and did my own thing. And basically what I did for him was basically run an agency for internal brands that went on the profit. And I had this experience in this team and I kind of branched off my own and started the Trav brand. When he told me to go create my own brand, I was like thinking about it, like I could run an agency, yeah. I could be the guy, right? And so- hey, Trav, just, Trav, man, have you done a book yet? Um, I have an ebook, like just I, no, one book. I, I'm gonna put the pressure on you, man. I think, I, think that, I think people listen to this right now, it's like, yo, I need the formula. And not only I need to phone them, but I think they need your story too. I think this is an incredible interview, man. Uh, uh, the, the breakdown, well, I appreciate it, man. Of the, of the process of like for me, and, I, and I'm saying this because the the process of going through, you know, an idea to actually watching it happen is like manifestation. 
And I'm like, dude, is this guy like writing this thing down? Like, this is, this is crazy. I mean, cause you go from, you know, watching others do successful things to creating your own thing and becoming successful. So I think audience right now, if you're listening to this, if you don't even have the access to be around the people who have you watched, whether it's on TV or on YouTube or, you know, maybe you watch from a distance that has inspired you. And what are some of the lessons that you can learn to take all this information together and really do something with it? And man, I, I just thank you for the, the valuable insight you've brought to this interview. And I want to ask you a question that we've asked every single person that's ever hopped on this show, been on this podcast. I don't care if they graduated or perhaps they didn't graduate at all. And you were asking yourself, the question of the show, school's over, now what? What advice would Travis give? Man, you know, it, it's fun. it's a good question again, man. You got the great questions that make me think. But I'd say two things. One, I was in school, and when school was over for the day, I went to work on my yeah. dream. So I went to class, I studied for my test, and then I didn't choose the route to go party and just, like, hang out. I went to my office and then my factory and I started working. So I worked every night and every weekend and in between classes. And when I was on campus, I was working. So while I was in college, after class, I made moves. Then after school, it was like this massive burden that lifted off me. It was like, now it starts. Now is where you get to then put all the distractions aside, which were like going to class and studying and taking tests and hanging having a social life you got to put all that aside and then that's when the real work began it was like oh i've been used to grinding i've been working like 12 hours a day between school and work let's apply all that to entrepreneurship and chase my dreams and honestly it's like bliss like after that i was just unlocked and uh i mean i'm a different breed I, i'm an entrepreneur not everyone's an entrepreneur but you know, I'm self-motivated. And when I didn't have anything else, any obligations, any student clubs or other things to deal with, man, it was just put your head down and make your dreams happen because time flies. Man, it's been a uh, fabulous. It's one of my, it's gonna be one of my new 2021 favorites, man. I like this dope advice. I mean, you got to put your head down and, and get to work. And what I like about that answer is that if you're working somewhere right now, you're giving that job 10 hours a day. You can't give yourself the same type of, of love and, and for something that you want to do, something's wrong. And I think that is a, a great way of saying that. And if somebody's listening right now, they want to know more about you, where they can find you. Just give everybody your social media handles, you know, so they can stay in touch and what you got coming up next. Yeah, um, just go follow me at Trav on Instagram. It connects to all my stuff or visit my website, travbrand.com. Um, I'm on every social media platform. DMs are always open. And um, I guess what's next? Look out for some new digital products and apps that I'm be launching with Shopify because uh, I'm working really hard on that stuff right now and continuing to grow my businesses. That's going to be dope, bro. Like, so here's, here's the thing. I want to put out a challenge because people listening right now, we got them all excited about these flex watches, bro. Let's let, let's figure out a way to get oh. the audience some of these flex watches. Are you down for that? Of course. Of course. Let's do awesome. it. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick, you know, we're going to pick, are you cool with five people? We'll pick five, five of you want to do more. We're cool with five people. Um, that if you're listening to this episode right now, you're inspired by this episode. I want you to do, you know, one or two things, right? I want you to one tag, you know, tag Travis on Instagram. His social media handles is right below on the show notes, tag him. So we know exactly that you enjoyed this episode. If you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to this right now, or perhaps you're catching this, uh, getting the excitement from a caption that we post. We want to be able to send this out to you because I think this brand is amazing. The store is amazing. And also these guys are giving back. So appreciate you, bro. I'm excited to have you collab and do that. Oh, I appreciate it, man. It's been great being on the show. I can't believe it's already over. <laughs> it's been phenomenal, man. Phenomenal, man. For those of you guys that are out there listening right now, always remember, dream it, believe it, go out and get it. Hey, what's up, fam? Thanks for watching. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button. We'll see you next week here at School's Over Now What? And always remember, dream it, believe it, go out and get it.